Okay, uh, so welcome back to this course on combinatorics. Uh, so we continue uh, with uh, our topic in graph theory. Uh, today we will uh, uh, we will talk about uh, some very important results. Uh, before going to that, uh, let me introduce a couple of uh, uh, product notions in uh, in graphs. So uh, the first uh, product that we are going to see is called Cartesian product. So given uh, two graphs, let's say G and H, uh, we want to look at the uh, product of uh, the graph G and H. And this product is uh, defined uh, on the, uh, the Cartesian product of the vertex sets of G and H. So the vertex set of the product graph is the Cartesian product of V of G uh, times the Cartesian product, I mean, Cartesian product of V of G times V of X. So this is the uh, 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 the pairs, uh, ordered pairs uh, uh, from uh, uh, vertices of G and vertices of X, right? Where the first component is from the vertex of G, vertex set of G, and the second component is from the vertex set of X. So that is the vertex set of the uh, product graph. Now, how are the edges defined? So the uh, so there is an edge. Uh, from let's say uh, a vertex uh, g comma h uh, in the product to g dash comma h dash, uh, if and only if uh, either uh, g is equal to g dash, right? It's the same vertex, and uh, h h dash is an edge uh, in the graph h, or uh, h is equal to h dash and g g dash is an edge in the graph g. So if either of this happens. You have uh, you have an edge from G H to G dash H dash. So if you look at uh, you know this product, we we will see that the if suppose suppose your graph G is just one edge, and your graph H is also just one edge. So what happens if there is an edge in G, and there is an edge in H? Okay. So what happens is that so in the product graph. So this will be the corresponding points, right? Okay, so this is let's say uh, one, two, and uh, a, b. Then you have one a, one b, two a, two b, right? So the edges are going to be like this, right? So basically, uh, you will get all these uh, four edges. So this is why it looks like a box, and the symbol for the product is basically uh, a square, right? A, a box. So this is the symbol that we use the box symbol and that box tells you how to define the product right i mean like you know if you have so whenever you have an edge in the graph g and an edge in the graph s the corresponding uh, endpoints you know so uh, in the product you can take and then you know how to put the edges so that will tell you how to uh, do it for the entire graph and uh, and that is the reason this symbol is used to represent uh, the product so the Cartesian product of G and H is uh, defined this way. So here is an example uh, of a graph uh, on uh, three uh, vertex cycle G and a four vertex path H and a product graph. Okay. So if you, if you look at the product, you can see uh, how this is, right? So you have uh, uh, several copies of G you can see, right? Uh, and you can see also see uh, several copies of H if you look at it. Uh, like this, right? So these are basically copies of H. So if you if you think about uh, this product, you know, take this uh, you know definition uh, and look at how how these uh, edges are going to come in the product. You will see that uh, you know this product can be thought of as uh, obtained in the following way. So you take the graph G. And you replace every vertex of G with a copy of H, right? So here you take the graph G and uh, replace every vertex with a copy of H, right? Like this. Okay? Now, the corresponding vertices in in H, right? So we'll have an edge if and only if there is an edge in the graph G, okay? So, so between this copy and this copy, right? There is an edge. There is an edge from G, uh, from this vertex to this vertex. So the corresponding copies, the vertices corresponding to, right? This replacing, right? So they will have an edge between them. 
and uh, you can also see it as like uh, you know taking the graph h replace every vertex of h with a copy of g and then uh, do the same thing right put an edge whenever there is an edge in the edge so basically it, it becomes a uh, you know uh, it's a symmetric uh, uh, product so you can see that g uh, Cartesian uh, uh, g box h is e isomorphic to s box g. Okay, so this is something that you can you can prove uh, you know as a homework. So uh, that is the Cartesian product. So now uh, given uh, such a product, we can we can ask several questions, right? Because all the parameters that you have studied in graph theory, we can try to ask like what happens to this parameter when I take the product of two graphs, right? So you know the parameter for the g and the same parameter for h so what will be the uh, parameter for the product graph now uh, here are some uh, basic questions that i want you to try to work out as uh, homework questions so here is the first question let uh, g and h uh, be graphs and uh, g box h be the cartesian product of g and h okay now prove that uh, G Cartesian product uh, H is isomorphic to H uh, product G. Second question asks you to prove that uh, if G and H are, uh, I mean, uh, to show that uh, G and H are both subgraphs of the product graph, right? We observe this, uh, you know, like in a in an intuitive fashion, but uh, uh, but we have to prove it uh, formally from the definition, right? So here is the definition of the product. Uh, and the third question is that uh, uh, suppose suppose you are uh, uh, you know given this product a graph. Uh, what is the minimum number of disjoint copies of H present in uh, in the product, right? Again, uh, it should be clear from uh, the you know the the picture like uh, we gave, but uh, you have to prove it formally. Then. Uh, the fourth question is that uh, the uh, you know small delta of a graph is the minimum degree, right? As you remember, and capital delta is the maximum degree of the graph. Now you want to find uh, these parameters for the product in terms of the uh, parameters of the component graphs, right? So G and H are the components. So can you say uh, uh, these two parameters in terms of the uh, delta of g, delta of h, and capital delta of g, and capital delta of x. And finally, uh, you can also show that the chromatic number, right? So chromatic number is the minimum number of uh, colors uh, that suffices to color the uh, vertices of a graph such that the adjacent vertices does not get the same color, right? So show that the chromatic number of the product graph is actually equal to the maximum of the chromatic number of the constituent graphs, right? So you take the chromatic number of G and chromatic number of H, what is the maximum? With that many colors, you can color the product graph also. So uh, these are uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, the immediate questions that you can ask. Uh, and uh, they are not very difficult uh, to, to prove. So I, I would like you to uh, work out this as uh, your homework questions. So, once you have the Cartesian product, uh, we can also define a few more other products. So, I will I will define one more product, uh, which uh, we call the uh, direct product or uh, tensor product. So, given two graphs, let's say G and H, uh, the direct product is again defined on the Cartesian product of the vertex, uh, vertices, right? V of G cross V of H. And uh, the adjacency is defined as follows. So if uh, G1, H1, and G2, H2 are uh, 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 vertices in the product graph, then uh, there is an edge from G1, H1 to G2, H2, if and only if both uh, the edges G1, G2 uh, is in, uh, in G and H1, H2 is in H. Okay? So G1, G2 must be an edge in G and uh, G, H1, H2 must be an edge in uh, H. Then we have an uh, edge between G1, H1, and uh, G2, H2. Okay, so, uh, so if, you, if you take the product of uh, two edges, for example, as we looked at in the other case, you will see that, uh, you know, so you have this edge here and the edge here. In the product, you have these cross edges, okay? 
you don't have the other four edges that we had for the uh, direct product, I mean, uh, for the Cartesian products, but you have the these two edges, the cross edges. And, uh, and this, uh, you can see, is very different from the uh, previous product that we looked at. And, and the symbol that we use, again, uh, denotes how, how the edges are defined, right? So if you have an edge here and edge here, what happened to the uh, edge in the product is given by the, uh, the symbol of the product itself. Now, here is an example of the product of a, a cycle and a path of length 3, right? So you will see uh, the graph looks like this, okay? So, uh, so just uh, look at the definition and see how, uh, how this adjusts 0, 0 to 1, 1. Uh, 2, 0 to 1, 1 and uh, 2, 0 to 0, 1, 0, 1 to 1, 2, all these edges are there. So one, one can feel that, you know, like, you, you know, you don't see directly the copies of the graph H and G here. Now you can ask whether they are present and in what cases uh, they may be present or may not be present. Right? Such questions one can ask. So uh, here are some questions for you. So if uh, G, G cross H is the direct product, then uh, first question is that is it necessary that G or H is a subgraph of the product graph? Okay. So if it is yes or no, you have to give a justification. Then uh, the second part is to uh, show uh, that the uh, product is basically, uh, right? Like if you, if you take uh, uh, G cross H is isomorphic to H cross C. And uh, also to prove that uh, uh, the product is connected if and only if both uh, components are connected and uh, one of uh, the components is not bipartite. If, if both are bipartite, then the graph is not uh, connected. Okay, so this is something uh, that you should uh, uh, you should prove. Okay. And, and and the fourth question uh, is to show that the chromatic number of the product graph, right, is at most the minimum of the chromatic number of G and chromatic number of S. So in the earlier uh, Cartesian product, we actually proved that the chromatic number of the product is actually uh, the maximum of the uh, is uh, of the uh, chromatic numbers of the G and H. Here it is saying that it is at most minimum of the chromatic number of G and H. Okay. Now, okay. Now, so uh, one of the reasons I I, uh, I introduce this product is uh, is this uh, conjecture, uh, which has been open for uh, several decades before it was proved uh, in the last year, 2019. Uh, by uh, a very young uh, Russian mathematician called uh, uh, Shito. Okay, so the conjecture uh, due to a famous mathematician called uh, Hedetnimi states the following that the chromatic number of uh, the direct product of G and H is actually equal to the minimum of the chromatic number of G and chromatic number of H. Okay. So I asked you to prove that it is at most the minimum. Now the question is that is the minimum always required, right? So if the chromatic number of G and H are uh, given, uh, can you say that you know the in the product you always need uh, the minimum of these two? So hedonymic conjecture that is actually equal to the minimum, right? It cannot be strictly less, but it was uh, disproved uh, 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 two years before. Right? So this paper uh, is a very short paper. Okay? Actually, you know the the content uh, of the paper is just one and a half pages, but. Uh, uh, it appeared in Annals of Mathematics because uh, of its very uh, high importance. And uh, there have been several attempts to prove this you know, uh, in the in the, this uh, several five, six decades. And uh, uh, there were many progresses, right? And uh, each of them tried to prove uh, uh, the conjecture true for certain classes of graphs, etc. And but uh, it is uh, it's false. Okay? The conjecture is in general, it is false. It could be true for several subclasses, but uh, you can find uh, counter examples for conjecture. So this is a very interesting paper, very short paper, uh, and uh, very cryptically uh, written, and uh, 
uh, i recommend uh, interested uh, students to take a look at this paper and try to try to read it and uh, see how much uh, you can follow uh, and uh, uh, you know the, the proof is not really very difficult it is just written in a very short uh, uh, manner okay now uh, we uh, go to uh, uh, few more definitions so given uh, given a graph a g okay and two subsets of the vertex satellite say a and b uh, are given right now we talk about uh, the you know the paths uh, that go from uh, you know the vertices in a to vertices in b okay so the the paths from a to b are basically the paths which are the starting point is in a and ending point is in the set b now uh, once you consider this a b paths right suppose you can find a subset of vertices right uh, or edges actually right so subset of vertices and edges uh, such that every ab path must pass through one of these vertices and edges right you can always find this by you know, taking the uh, looking at all the paths and then finding a, a set a suitable set so that uh, every path from a to b must pass through one of these uh, vertices or edges right then uh, such a set uh, is called a separating set. Okay. So if X is a subset of uh, V union E, such that uh, every AB path contains some vertex or edge from X. Okay. Now, then we call X as a separating set for uh, AB. Okay. So AB is separating. So why is it AB separating? Because if you remove X, right, then there is no path from A to B. Right. That is the idea. So the idea of separating that is important because it basically talks about the, you know, like, uh, uh, so for example, you know, uh, you are talking about, let's say, uh, you know, the graph is going to represent, you know, connection between very important uh, centers of, uh, very important centers of, let's say, uh, military intelligence, right? And then, or, or, uh, or, or military uh, stations, right? And, and the edges basically represent the connections or communication channels uh, between between this uh, centers. And then uh, a separating set is basically you know the nodes uh, or you know the, the the paths or bridges whatever right you know, connections roads that can be uh, critical in the sense that once you once you are able to you know if an enemy is able to destroy this, then the communication or you know uh, contact between these centers will be lost. So therefore, uh, you know, and, and this can come in many, many situations, not just in, you know, uh, in, in military planning, but it can be in communication networks, it can be in, uh, in real life, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, networks uh, or many other uh, situations. But uh, each of them basically uh, has this uh, abstraction that you can basically find a subset uh, whose removal uh, disconnects the communication between these two uh, sets. Now, uh, you know, when you want to make, uh, you know, your network very robust, you want to make sure that there is no uh, very small uh, such sets, right? So you have to ask about uh, uh, such questions. So the notion of separating set is very important. Now, uh, so here is an example uh, in the graph uh, given here. Uh, that uh, you know you have the set A, right? So A is the set of vertices under this uh, uh, the circle, and uh, here is another circle B of vertices. Then uh, the blue vertices and blue edges form a separating set, right? So if, if you just look at the blue edges and blue vertices, right? If you just remove these edges and these two vertices, then there is no uh, connection between A and B, right? That is uh, immediately clear. So therefore, uh, you know, this is a separating set for uh, A and B. Now, a related notion uh, is of uh, internally uh, disjoint paths. We will see why. Uh, so let G uh, be a graph and uh, uh, let's say U and V are vertices of the graph. 
G. Right? Now, a set of UV paths, okay? So, set of paths starting from U and ending in V, that is a P1 to PK, are said to be internally vertex disjoint, uh, or I will uh, usually say internally disjoint, uh, or IVT sometimes. Uh, if we have uh, the property that for any two paths, PA and PJ, where I not equal to J, the intersection uh, does not contain uh, any vertex other than U and V. Okay? So, only the starting vertex and the ending vertex can be common. Everything else is uh, different for uh, any two paths. Right? So, they, then they are called internally vertex instrument. Right? For any pair of uh, paths, you should have this property that PA intersection PJ contains only U and V. Then uh, we say this set of paths are internally vertex disjoint. So, for example, uh, in this uh, graph here, right? So, look at the path as u to 3, right? 3 to 4 and 4 to v, right? So, this is one path. Then, uh, you know, you cannot take, for example, these vertices, right? To be part of your, uh, you know, another path if it is going to be disjoint. So, for example, I can take u to 1, 1 to 5, 1, 5 to v, right? So, these two paths uh, are internally vertices disjoint because u and v are the only vertices here, right? On the other hand, if you take, for example, let's say u to 2, 2 to 4 and 4 to v, this path is a different path from u to 3, 3 to 4 and 4 to v, but they are not internally vertices disjoint because the vertex 4 is common to both. So, if you look at this graph, you can find uh, several other pairs like P1, P4, right? So, P1 is this path U3, 4V, P2 is U3, 5V, P3 is U2, 4V, P4 is U1, 5V, and P5 is U2, V, right? So, if you look at these paths, then P1, P4 is uh, is uh, internally what is joined, P2, P3 is internally joined. And P1, P4, P5 is also internally disjoint because if I take P1, P4, P4, P5, or P1, P5, they all have a, uh, you know disjoint uh, vertex set except for U and V. So they are all internally versus disjoint paths, right?